In this lesson, we're going to begin setting up our boss detection system. All right, so in between lessons, we set up some colliders for the, the feet and the legs, and I also set one up for the body. So to show you how that's set up, let's select our game boss, and you'll see those colliders in position and where they're positioned at, and you can kind of get a rough idea of the radius and uh, things like that. But uh, to show you specifically, uh, I'm going to go to my search here in my hierarchy, and I'm going to search for collide, and you'll see that a list comes up here. And the first one that we have is our body collider. I want you to take note of its rotation and position where it is on the game boss. And it's just basically covering up the main part of the body, the chest of the game boss. Um, also take note of the radius and the height and the direction that it was created. And um, that's all set. And then I want you to notice the path uh, for this, where it is parented. So if you drill down the game boss to the global um, object and then to the root and then the back, you'll see that the body collider is parented to this back bone. The next thing is the foot collider. As you can see, that's down here. Uh, they notice the radius and the height and direction and then where it's parented. So this is all the way down uh, to the back, thorax, clavicle, all the way down to the wrist, and it's parented to the wrist. Same thing for the other foot collider. Um, it's just on the opposite side, so it's on the left wrist. Moving on down to the leg colliders, you can see that these are a little bit different. Um, notice that they're not covering up the entire leg, they're just covering up the part that would damage the player. Um, these colliders are the only ones that I'm worried about right now because we want to just get this game boss functionality going. Uh, we want to create the colliders that are uh, taking damage and the ones that are giving damage. Okay. So on this one, this is going to be on the right gaster tarsus. So you can see the path that you need to take to get to that and parent it to this game object right here. Also take note of the radius of the height and the direction. Same thing for this leg collider, except it's going to be on the right petiole tarsus. Um, the next leg collider is just on the opposite side. Okay, so take note of that path. And these are all duplicates, so they should have the same radius and height and direction. Okay, so this is on the petiole tarsus. And then we have our rear collider, which we've already created. All right, so now that we have that set, let's close out our search, and I'm going to collapse my game boss and select the game boss game object as we want to create a trigger that is going to act as our spherical boss detection perimeter. So uh, let's go ahead and add a component called physics and we're going to go to sphere collider. We want to create a radius for this collider and I'm going to go up to 20. It's going to make it quite large here and you can see the radius or the perimeter in which uh, the player is going to be detected. So if the player goes inside of this trigger or even collides with this trigger, um, it's going to um, send back some information saying that the player is being detected. Now before we can do that, we need to make sure that this is set to trigger, so that way the player can get closer to the boss if needed. If it's not set to trigger, if we just touch the collider, we won't be able to go any further as it's keeping us from going inside of the collider. So make sure that's set to trigger, and then we want to create our script. So to get started with this, let's go to our boss folder in the scripts folder and we're going to right click and create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call this boss detection. Alright so now that we have that set um, let's get in and start um, coding this out. So I'm going to double click on this and bring it up in Mono Develop. Now inside of a new script I tend to uh, remove any uh, parts of this that I don't need. Normally I like to start out on just a fresh uh, script with my curly brackets in line with one another. It just helps me to keep things organized and it's just my preferred method of scripting. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create my variables that I want. And the first variable that I'm going to create is going to be a public bool variable. So we're going to type in public bool because it's going to be a true or false variable and we want to give it the variable name and that's going to be player detected. Now at this point um, if you are brand new to scripting, if you've never experienced C-sharp scripting, I would suggest that you go ahead and stop um, this tutorial and you go ahead and take a look at the C-sharp, or introduction to C-sharp scripting in Unity course that we have available. It's a great primer for getting up to speed on the terms and uh, the core concepts that you need for scripting. Um, so let's go ahead and move on from here. We're going to create some private variables. So I'm going to say private game object 
and we're going to say player. Now what we're doing with this is we're looking to or we're checking to see if the player is colliding with this um, trigger. We don't want other objects to trigger player detected. We only want the player to trigger that. Now the next one that we're going to create is going to be called uh, the private sphere collider. So we're giving it its type. You can see that comes up there and then we're going to give it its variable name. So we're going to say col for col for collider. You can name it really anything that you want, uh, but I'm just going to keep things short here. Uh, so looking at our variables really quick, you'll see that there are three different parts to every variable that I've created. We have our access modifier. This one is public, allowing it to be accessed from the inspector inside of Unity, and also allowing this variable to be accessed from our uh, two other scripts. Um, we have our variable type. Okay, notice that all three of these have a type. So this is a bool variable, which gives me a true or false, or will hold true or false information. This is a game object type, so it's going to hold game objects uh, data. And this is a sphere collider, so it's going to be looking for a sphere collider to put in here. And then we have our variable name, which could really be anything, but you want to make sure that you are uh, making variable names that are descriptive and easy to understand. Okay, so now that we have our variable set, let's go ahead and create um, our awake function. Normally in my awake function, I like to initialize my variables. None of these variables have been initialized. Uh, whenever you initialize a variable, usually you'll see something like an equal sign and then whatever the data is. So something like this would be equals to true. Now I could do this if I wanted to, but to keep things clean, I like to do it in the awake function. So I'm going to say void awake and then open close curly brackets and then begin initializing those variables. Now the player detected is not something that needs to be initialized um, right off the bat because its default state is going to be false. So I'm going to leave it just the way it is. But I am going to initialize these two variables, the player and the collider. So the first thing that we need to do is say player equals and then what do we want or what data do we want to be put into this variable. So with the player variable I want to look for the player game object. So I'm going to say game object dot find game object with tag. And you can see that here. Now you'll notice that there are two different ones. One says find game objects, which means plural, and the we have the singular find game object. Now we only have one player, so we're going to say game object with tag. Usually find game objects is whenever you have an array of objects to find. So we're just going to use the single. Now what tag are we looking for? This is um, started out with the open parentheses and then open quotations and then you set the tag to this. Now you have to make sure that your tag is named exactly the same as it is in the script. So we're going to say player and this is the default tag inside of Unity. So th this is going to be very easy to set up. Now whenever you use this uh, method you need to make sure that you um, set those tags. So I'm going to make a comment here. I'm going to say set up the tags. Okay, so I need to make sure that I do that inside of the inspector. Now from here we're going to say call, okay, and we're going to set this equal to the sphere collider that is attached to our game boss. So I'm going to say get component because the sphere collider is a component and we're going to open uh, with our brackets here and we're going to say sphere Collider. Notice that that comes up under IntelliSense. Just hit enter and that should fill out the rest of the way. You want to close those brackets and then you want to open close parentheses and then end with a semicolon. So what it's going to do whenever it goes into this awake function, once this starts, uh, whenever the level loads or starts, um, it's going to say, all right, we want to get the component and it's going to be the sphere collider and it should be at the same place as this script. So I'll show you that here in just a moment. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to go to our void update function. Now inside of my update, I'm not going to do anything just yet, but I am going to make a note. So every single frame, I want to check to see if the player is even alive. Should I be detecting the player? So I'm going to say check to see if player is alive. If not, the script is not going to run. Okay. Um, now what we want to do is we want to check to see if the player is colliding with our trigger. So I'm going to say void on trigger 
and there are three different uh, types of on trigger functions. There's on trigger enter, on trigger stay, and on trigger exit. On trigger enter will only be called once whenever the collider, the desired collider, um, touches that trigger and it only runs that script that's inside of this one time. Now I want it to run this every single frame so I'm going to use on trigger stay. Now on trigger exit obviously is whenever the uh, collider that we're looking for exits the trigger. So in this one we're going to say on trigger stay and then we're going to pass in the information of what collider we're looking for to activate this function and we're going to say collider other. Now other is just a generic name that we tend to use uh, for colliders and I can set this um, variable to the player. So I'm going to say if other dot game object is equal to so double equal sign player then we want it to run this code so we're going to say player detected equals true. There we go. Now we need to check to see if the player has left the trigger so to do that we're going to say void and you know what I'm actually going to copy all of this code so I'm going to go from this curly bracket all the way to the top here so I'm going to hit control C and then come down below that and hit control V now instead of on trigger stay we're going to say on trigger exit and instead of player detected is equal to true we're going to say player detected is equal to false so now if we just hit save and we go into unity there are two things that we need to do so if you'll remember we need to set up the tag for our player so go to the first person controller go to the tag in the inspector and change that to player now that we have that tag set up we need to assign the boss detection script to our boss game object so let's go to the game boss and then let's either drag and drop this right into the inspector or you can hit add component go to scripts and then add it that way as well. Okay, so now that that has been added, you can see that we have player detected and it's at false for right now. If we hit play and we come in here, if we collide with that sphere collider, you'll see that it says player detected is equal to true. Notice that it's staying true, and if we exit, it turns back to false.